What's up, fellas? We are only one week away from the NFL draft, and that means we're all starting to gear up for our rookie drafts. I know me personally, I have the 105 in a single QB, the 102, 106, 107 in a super flex league, and these landing spots are going to be crucial on next Thursday for some of these players. It's not going to make a second round pick all of a sudden a top five option, but when we're talking about guys like A.D. Mitchell, Ladd McConkey, and Jonathan Brooks together, it's going to make that difference when that gap is already pretty tight there. So we're going to talk about the dream realistic landing spots, right? I'm not going to say Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a chief, but we're in their range. What are the dream landing spots for these guys and what that would mean for the rookie draft stacks? We're not just going to talk about, oh, he could go here. This would be awesome. But if they do go there, what actually happens to their rookie draft stock. So we're going to talk about all those things, and we're going to start with our first player, Mr. Caleb Williams. Alrighty, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on Caleb Williams because obviously we all know he's a Chicago Bear. He has been for a while, but I do just want to say outside of the Vikings, I actually think this is the second best spot for a quarterback to go. You've got DJ Moore. You got Keenan Allen. They're going to build around you for the future. I don't think it gets much better than that. As far as your super flex drafts, I think he's the one on one no matter what. Um, and I really think your drafts start after Caleb Williams. And they start with this next guy. We're going to talk about Mr. Marvin Harrison. So to me, I really think there's only four teams that could take Marvin Harrison Jr. I think it's New England, Arizona, the Chargers, and the Giants. I think it's unlikely New England does. They're either going to trade back or draft a quarterback. And I really hope he doesn't go there anyways. I don't think he makes it to the Giants, which means I think it's between Arizona and the Chargers. I think both are fantastic landing spots. I'm going to give the edge to Arizona. I don't know what you're probably thinking. Cameron, could you imagine? I mean, just imagine him and Justin Herbert. The only reason I'm going to say Arizona, right, there's a couple. Jim Harbaugh, Greg Roman, right, they're going to run the ball on that offense. Obviously, if he's the only wide receiver there, he'd have a great time. The real reason is I think he's going to be a Cardinal, so I'm just, like, prepping myself, right, at that 102 in my Superflex League. I'm really hoping he's there, so I'm saying if he's a Cardinal, this is the best bet for him. So maybe it's wishful thinking. If you want to say Chargers, that is just fine. But in 2020, D-Hop had 160 targets, 115 receptions, 1,400 yards with Kyler Murray in Arizona. Am I saying Marvin Harrison is going to have that as a rookie? No. Am I saying, am I going to put it out of the realm of possibilities? Absolutely not. But what I am saying is there could be years down the road with Kyler that could look a lot like that. If he ends up in Arizona, I'm going to be honest. If I got a QB heavy team, right, where I'm sturdy there, it is going to be very tempting to take him at the one one in Superflex and non-Superflex leagues. I think he for sure is the one one We're going to now talk about our next guy, Mr. Jaden Daniels. All righty, for Jaden Daniels, I'm just going to keep it between the Commanders and Patriots because from most mocks, from most things I've heard, it doesn't feel like he falls outside the top three. And the reason I'm doing this is because for every quarterback, I would say the Minnesota Vikings, right? You got Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson. Obviously, it would be a fantastic place to be. So I'm going to talk about it just between commanders and the Patriots. And I think it's clearly the commanders to me, right? I mean, supporting cast is just, I mean, it's commanders so heavily in that favor. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Brian Robinson, Austin Eckler. You know what? You don't want to be thrown to just Pop Douglas over in New England. Like, fine player. Ramondre Stevenson, fine player. But that's it. That's all you have. And, you, you know, you just don't really want that. And I also feel like the regime in Washington, right, they're starting to start over. Bob Kraft stuck in the past going after Bill Belichick. So I just don't want any part of that. So I really hope that he's a commander. He would be my 103. But in a, even if he's a Patriot, he probably still is my 103. But I'm feeling a little more shaky about it. All right. Now we're going to go back to the wide receiver position and talk Malik Neighbors. My worry with Malik Neighbors is that he's going to end up being a New York Giant, right? I still think he could be productive, but that situation they have with Daniel Jones, not really conducive for fantasy points from the wide receiver position. Obviously, he would have zero competition as of right now, and I feel like he could definitely still be productive. And I feel like he's definitely still going to be worthy of a top six pick at the very worst, most likely a top five pick in your super flex drafts. But where I really want him to go is the Los Angeles Chargers. We talked about with Marvin Harrison, 
but him and Justin Herbert with his 17.6 yards per reception last year would be absolutely deadly. I mean, I think that would be, you know, from day one, he'd be the unquestioned one in LA as well, right? You do have Jim Harbaugh, you got Greg Roman. So they're, they're not going to want to throw the ball a ton, but when you're the number one attached to Justin Herbert, you're going to get fed. We saw it last year with Keenan Allen, and this would be a fantastic fit. This is where I hope he goes. He is my 104 and maybe even my 103 if he ends up here, depending on the Jaden Daniels situation. But obviously, if he goes to the Giants, it could be a little bit different. Hopefully, hopefully, he is a Los Angeles Charger. All righty, let's talk about the wide receiver three in this class, Rome Adunze. For Rome, he's got a couple of teams that are in his most likely range, right? He could be a guy that surprises us, goes six of the Giants. Um, I don't think he quite goes that high. He could, you know, fall a little bit later in the draft, especially if teams get quarterback happy in the middle of it. But most likely, it's the Titans, Jets, Bears, and Falcons that are all kind of in that area. And among those four teams, right, I'm hoping that he doesn't really go to any of them. What I'm hoping for Rome is that a Cardinals or Chargers trade back, talked about both their situations, or a Buffalo Bills team, New York or Kansas City Chiefs, excuse me, trade up to go get. Him. Are they super likely to happen? No, but could you imagine him as the wide receiver one with Josh Allen and that Buffalo team? Um, with the Chargers with Arizona, he, like neighbors, like Marvin Harrison, could put up huge numbers. What I think is more likely to happen is he could be a Jet. Maybe maybe the Bears get. I think both of them for Dynasty are still fantastic landing spots. Titans, I'm a little less excited. Falcons, I'm a little less excited. However, I still think at any of those positions, he's going to be the 107 at his floor in your Dynasty drafts. If he goes to a Buffalo, Los Angeles, or Arizona, and Neighbors ends up on a Giants or something like that, then all of a sudden... I'm probably going to take Rome ahead of neighbors because I do think that gap is that close between the two of them. Alrighty, now we're going to talk about a pair of quarterbacks here, J.J. McCarthy and Drake May. And the reason that I'm talking about both of them together is because I have their dream landing spot as the same. If they go 103 through 105, you're hoping that the Minnesota Vikings is the team that trades up to get them. And I know I'm a Vikings fan, so you can hate on me for that. But Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, Aaron Jones, you got a left, one of the best left tackles in Christian Darrisaw and Kevin O'Connell calling plays. Out of all the teams that need a quarterback, this is the best for fantasy place to land. So whoever goes there between the two of these guys, I'm going to take higher. That That's the way I'm going about it because I think both can be great. But I think in this situation – landing spot matters between these two i think in a vacuum drake may has the higher ceiling so if neither end up on the vikings i think i'm going to take drake may higher however if they're both on the vikings i think that jj mccarthy is worth the 106 and i think drake may is worth the 105 ahead of rome doing say no matter what his landing spot is unless it is probably the buffalo bills that would be the only team i'd be worried about so between those two that's kind of where i'm at I think that Drake may has the higher ceiling, but whichever team ends up with the Minnesota Vikings, if both do, that's their dream landing spot. That's the player that I am going to take higher. Now we've got the only tight end on this list, really the only tight end in the draft we're talking about for fantasy. You can make whatever you want about the other guys, but Brock Bowers is that guy. He, it sounds like he's going to be a top 15 pick at the worst. The team that has picked 15 is the Indianapolis Colts. That is my dream landing spot for Brock Bowers. He's like I said, best player in this draft. And I think if you plug him into this offense with Anthony Richardson, Michael Pittman, the hope would be that he's the Mark Andrews for Anthony Richardson. These guys who are a little bit more scramblers, they are going to try and find their safety blanket a lot if they do get in trouble for Anthony Richardson. That would be Brock Bowers. You know, if, if there's a poor landing spot for him, for Brock Powers, I could see him sliding a little bit. I think, you know, Cincinnati would be, I know they just signed Gasicki, but I think that'd be another good one. I think there's a couple of these landing spots where he stays. Most likely for me, he's the 108, unless a couple of these guys behind him have fantastic landing spots. But Brock Powers for me, most likely the 108, no matter landing spot, and especially if he is a Colt. 
I think Brian Thomas has one of the highest ceilings of any of these wide receivers in this draft class, including the top three. The thing about Thomas is he's a little more raw, right? He came into college without a ton of football experience and then went up and put up 17 touchdowns last year. What that showed me is that this guy can thrive as a wide receiver too in any, you know, on a team. And so for me, the dream landing spot's got to be Dallas. Put him next to CD Lamb with Dak Prescott, high powered offense. Obviously, the worry from a dynasty perspective is they move on from Dak next year. I don't, I don't think they do, right? I think that's kind of a smoke screen, hoping maybe we can get Dak a little cheaper. I think Dak stays. So I really like him to learn under CD, to you know, really hone in on the craft to get better. I still think he can be phenomenal in this offense. I think he can be a top 10 fancy wide receiver down the road. I really, really want to see Brian Thomas on the Dallas Cowboys. Another team, maybe the Arizona Cardinals with their second pick if they don't go wide receiver early. You know, Cincinnati, if they're looking to trade T. Higgins, I think that could be awesome as well. But Dallas for me would be Brian Thomas's best landing spot. And if he does go here, I think I will move him above Brock Browers to be that 108, maybe even to the 107, depending if Drake May or JJ McCarthy get a disgusting landing spot. AD Mitchell, if you've watched our content before, you know Lucas pounds a table for the spot and it's the Buffalo Bills. AD Mitchell is an ex wide receiver. He's a guy you want on the outside. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff coming out about him. Oh my goodness, he doesn't know how to take care of his diabetes. He's got off the field issues. Bills fans are like, oh no, it's another Stefan Diggs. I think that's got it. I I personally believe that's a little more smoke than you know actual fire behind it. I understand, you know, maybe there's a red flag, maybe they back off of it. But from a fantasy perspective, if this dude is the number one with Josh Allen, can it get any better? Can it really get any better for AD Mitchell? Maybe you could say, oh, he's Patrick Mahomes number one. But I think being the clear one with Josh Allen is about as lucrative as it gets. If he lands here, there's going to be a lot of talk about him going ahead of Brian Thomas at the 109. And maybe he could go ahead of Brock Bowers for me, but I think he's pretty heavily cemented at this 110 unless it's a terrible landing spot, unless it you know we get a situation like JSN to the Seahawks last year, right, where it's oh, this dude's the wide receiver three easily. you know, Then maybe you back up, but if he's a bill, I think he's pretty heavily cemented at the 110. Maybe you take him at the 109 ahead of Bowers, but I don't think it's enough. Next, we have Jonathan Brooks, our first running back. And this one's simple to me. It's Dallas. The Cowboys spot is the most lucrative. As a team, they've been in the top half of rushing attempts ever since Mike McCarthy took over. We've seen top 15 running back finishes from Zeke and Tony Pollard over the last couple of years. And the depth chart has Rico Dowdle and Deuce Vaughn. Say whatever you want about those two guys. They are not starting caliber running backs. Jonathan Brooks would walk right into a starting running back role. I think he could easily be a top 15 running back, maybe you know a fringe top 12 running back. For me, I don't think he goes much higher than the 110, maybe up to the 109 in a super flex. I don't think at, if he was in Dallas, he'd go any lower than the 112. I think he'd be phenomenal there, but I don't think you're looking at a guy that you're going top five running back necessarily, even if he is on the Dallas Cowboys. I said Dallas was the most lucrative. To me, the second most lucrative is the Chargers running back position. I know they brought in Gus Edwards. I know they brought in J.K. Dobbins. Unfortunately for both these guys, due to injuries, due to age, at this point in the career, they are not starting running backs. You bring in Trey Benson to a Greg Roman, Jim Harbaugh offense where they're going to run the ball a lot to a quarterback like Justin Herbert who's shown, hey, I'll dump it off to the running back position. Obviously, Austin Eckler is a little bit different, right? He's one of the best receiving running backs we've seen maybe ever. But Trey Benson walks into this situation with a ton of fantasy upside, with a ton of potential for work. I think he becomes running back one if he's a charger, unless Jonathan Brooks is um, a Dallas Cowboy. Then I think it's more of a 1A, 1B. But if he's a charger, if he's alone in this, I think that he is easily the running back one. And what the range I just said for Jonathan Brooks, I do believe now applies to Trey Benson in this situation. Lad McConkey, put him on the Chiefs. That's all I want to say. Make him the 32nd pick, put him on the Chiefs. A guy who gets open, 
a clinical route runner and Patrick Mahomes. What a fantastic concept, right? I think he, as long as Mahomes has guys who get open with sure hands, he's going to get into the ball, right? He's going to make things happen. I think Ladd McConkey is going to pretty securely be a wide receiver two on a team for his entire career. So let him be the wide receiver two on maybe the best team to be a wide receiver two on in the Kansas City Chiefs. You put him here, the output's going to be fantastic, right? We're looking at crazy amount of receptions, probably a decent amount of yards. This is a team that scores a lot, so you get red zone work on top of it. I, I know that everybody wants to say, oh, Kansas City is a dream landing spot. It's not for everyone. For Ladd McConkey, I think this would be a fantastic spot for him. If he lands here, I got him between the 111 and the 201. I think it depends on other people's landing spots. I think he's about as safe of a guy you can get if he goes here. But I understand that his upside is a little bit capped just because of the player that he is. All righty, we got two more running backs left on this list, and then we're done. This one, Jalen Wright. I want to see him as a Cincinnati Bengal. He's an explosive player, right? He makes big plays happen. You put him on this Bengals team that's known for big plays. I know they brought in two, they have two running backs, but it's Chase Brown and Zach Moss. Zach Moss has not been able to win his starting job his entire career. He is a backup. He's a good backup, but he is a backup. You bring in Jalen Wright, he's able to win this job. Joe Mixon, three straight seasons, running back 10 or better. I know he probably won't get the same workload as a Joe Mixon, but let's not kid ourselves. I liked Joe Mixon from a fantasy perspective over this time, but he wasn't exactly lighting it up from an inefficiency standpoint. Jalen Wright can come in, play on probably a little bit lesser snaps with a little more efficiency. We could easily see something similar to what we saw with Joe Mixon. I'm not saying he's going to be the running back four. I don't think he's going to quite get the volume to be the running back four, but I do think he could have a very valuable, from a fantasy perspective, tenure in Cincinnati I would probably look to take him early second. I don't think he becomes the running back one. I think he's securely in the running back three to five conversation. I think Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson have kind of separated themselves. So I think 201, 202 range would be perfect for Jalen Wright as a Cincinnati Bengal. And our final player, Marshawn Lloyd. There's been buzz that he could be the first running back draft, which would definitely make things interesting from a rookie perspective to see how teams, if teams really valued him that way. For me, I have him as my running back four. I would love to see him, obviously, any of these other three places. I think those are the three best places for running back to land. But if I'm picking a new place for Marshawn Lloyd, I want to say Marshawn Lynch. I think that's going to be a tough one. You just see the Marshawn L and you're like, hey, Marshawn Lynch. But if I'm picking a place for Marshawn Lloyd, it's the Las Vegas Raiders. I know they have Zamir White, and I know they signed Alexander Madison. But Zamir White's 25 years old, right? He's had four career games that were very good, but he's also got a laundry list of injuries uh, to go with it. Alexander Madison proved last year he's not a starter, right? He's a good backup. He's He'll be good in that role, but he's not that guy. If he goes to this team, maybe he takes one year. You know, they move off of Zamir White after this season. They give Marshawn Lloyd the reins. And Antonio Pierce, as long as he's the coach, is going to want to run the ball. The Raiders as a team, their identity is always going to be hard-nosed football, hit you in the mouth kind of football. So they're going to look to run the ball. I think this could be a phenomenal spot for Marshawn Lloyd. I think this could easily move him above some of the other wide receivers. Um, that we haven't talked about yet if he does land with the Las Vegas Raiders. All righty, guys, thank you again for tuning in. Don't forget, next Thursday, live, we are going live the entire first round of the NFL draft to talk about picks as they happen, give you our reactions right away. You do not want to miss out on that. Be live for three hours. <laughs> we'll be tired, but we'll make it through, make it exciting, make it something worth watching. So make sure you tune into that next week. I'll. As always, we got content coming out constantly, so don't miss that. But with that, we will see you next week, and deuces.